Now let's look at an example where we consider frequency modulation. So let's start with a triangle wave. This triangle wave goes from minus one to one, and it has a period of one. We have a constant kf, which is equal to two pi times five, and a carrier frequency of 10 hertz. The modulated wave amplitude is just going to be equal to one. So let's find the following. The minimum and maximum instantaneous frequency, the angle of the modulated signal, and remember, to find that angle, we're going to need to do an integral, since this is frequency modulation. Let's find the modulated signal, and then let's also find the power of the modulated wave. So first, let's find the minimum and maximum instantaneous frequency. So the instantaneous frequency is the carrier frequency plus some constant kf times the message. In frequency modulation, we modulate the instantaneous frequency linearly. If we want to find this in linear frequency instead of angular frequency, we would just divide by 2 pi. To find the minimum instantaneous frequency, we could just substitute in the minimum value of the message, which is minus 1. So the minimum instantaneous frequency is 5 hertz. The maximum instantaneous frequency, similarly, we would substitute in the maximum value of the message, which is 1. So the maximum instantaneous frequency is 15 hertz. Now, if we want to find the angle of this, this wave, we're going to have to do some integrals, right? So for frequency modulation, we'll need to integrate the message from 0 to t. So we have three graphs. In the upper left, this graph is the omega ct, so that's the carrier frequency multiplied by the time. And as we might guess from the previous videos, that's just going to be a line, and it has an intercept at 0. But the integral is going to be something that looks a little bit like a sine wave. And that's because we're integrating a triangle wave. So the value of that integral is going to change up and down as that triangle wave moves forward. So the angle of this is going to be the sum of those two things. So it generally looks like a line that's increasing, but it's a little bit wavy due to that integral. So if we want to find the modulated signal, we've just found theta t, we've found the angle, so let's combine that to see what the modulated signal is going to look like. So that modulated signal is some angle that it's going to be some angle that's changing, like this. And so if we take that angle and we put it inside of a cosine wave, that means that the cosine wave is going to have an angle that's changing with time. And we can see that that means that as that angle changes with time, the frequency is going to be a little bit different at different places in time. So it goes from being a lower frequency to a higher frequency, then back to a lower frequency. So if we look at all of these together, we can see that the top graph is the message, and the message is that triangle wave. The instantaneous frequency goes from a minimum of 5 to a maximum of 15. And the angle is changing with time. Now, the very bottom, we have the frequency modulated signal. Now, this makes sense because if we look, starting at time 0, we can see that the frequency modulated signal looks like it has the lowest frequency. It's spread out the furthest. Now, if we go up, we can see that the instantaneous frequency is the, at a minimum there. It's at a minimum of 5. Now, moving further in time, we can see that the frequency modulated signal is getting more and more bunched up. So that means that the frequency is increasing. Now, if we look at 0 0.5 time, we can see that that's, that's where it's the most bunched up. And if we follow that up to the instantaneous frequency, look, that's where the instantaneous frequency is at a maximum. If we follow the instantaneous frequency further to the right, we can see at time one, the instantaneous frequency uh, is at another minimum. And if we look at the frequency modulated signal at the very bottom, we can again see that it looks like the frequency modulation frequency is at uh, the lowest frequency. So this makes sense. Now, what is the power of this modulated wave? So remember, regardless of the angle, 
the power is going to be equal to the amplitude squared over 2. So if we have an amplitude of 1 in our modulated wave, the power of this will be 1 half.